Okay, the title of this video is What's the Frequency, Handsome? I Dan Rather Not Say. <laughs> okay, What's the Frequency, Handsome? Kenneth means handsome. So this is about the song What's the Frequency, Kenneth? by R.E.M. and about a strange incident that was reported to have happened to the newscaster called Dan Rather. So that's why the title is I Dan Rather Not Say. So the story goes that one time Dan Rather was attacked by two men. And in the attack, he was asked a question. What's the frequency? What's the frequency? Now, later on, it is found out that the attackers were wanting to know what frequency messages were being broadcast to this individual or individuals. And of course, Dan Rather uh, just sort of proclaims he was innocent and nothing really, uh, he knew nothing about what they're saying. Now keep in mind that the whole incident could be completely fabricated and most likely that is true. However, it doesn't matter whether the incident was fabricated or uh, genuine. The group REM will uh, produce a song called What's the Frequency, Kenneth? And they will take the uh, so-called incident that took place with, with uh, the report by Mr. Dan Rather to speak about a whole generation that is brain dead. A whole generation that could be possibly manipulated by the television and the radio and even now uh, computers. So the question that was asked of Mr. Rather, what's the frequency? inspired this song, or perhaps they were told to do it by the ones who controlled REM. Now, the reason I'm doing this video is that I wanted to explore with you a concept that might sound rather foreign to you and might sound to you like Oh, I don't think this could happen. But I believe it is true that you can broadcast on certain frequencies and not need a radio uh, receiver or a television receiver. That the receiver that's actually used is your skull. Now your skull will vibrate and anything that can vibrate basically can be a receiver just like your ears are receivers of sound. So the vibrations that exist at certain frequencies can indeed uh, penetrate into the human life through the skull and then into the brain. Now, some of you might doubt this, but I want to refer you to a researcher by the name of Anthony Sutton. And Mr. Sutton was a researcher at the Hoover Institute. He's the brilliant man who gave us a couple of volumes in writing 
documenting the fact that the Soviet Union, its capabilities in manufacturing or of uh, producing armament or whatever you want to say is exclusively due to the influence of and the power of and the money from the Western powers. In other words, United States, Great Britain, and European nations gave to the Soviet Union its ability to have uh, all the material type things that, that we now know in Western civilization. His book documents it. It's, I believe it's a two volume set. And many people are not aware of things like this. What it really means is that the Soviet Union has been in league with Western powers. So anything that you know of that uh, smacks of the idea that Russia's been an enemy and so forth, it's just all nonsense, okay? Complete and total nonsense. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the West, namely United States, Great Britain, and European powers built up the Soviet Union. Now I'm taking you to an episode of uh, Gilligan's Island, okay, and this was in about 1965, I believe, or 66, that Gilligan suffered a blow to his head, and because of this blow on his head, um, his whole body and mouth became like a receiver for the radio. And that's why you'll see the professor here and Gilligan here and the skipper here. Interestingly enough, Gilligan is in red and the skipper is in blue. But you can see Gilligan's got his mouth open because when he opened his mouth, then uh, radio waves came through his body and they could hear uh, things that were going on on radio right through Gilligan. So, it is very possible that through these comedy shows, truth is actually being communicated to the population. And perhaps you'll not be able to open your mouth and radio broadcasting will come out of it. But maybe... Maybe the truth that was being communicated is that your body can be a receiver of frequency waves. And if your body can be a receiver, which I truly believe it is, you can be receiving signals in the air without having a radio nearby you or even a television set. In other words, your body is the receiver. And through the reception of those signals, you are being given messages. Now, what are these messages? Well, here in this case, it shows Ginger and Marianne, who are most likely just two men dressed as women and fixed up like they're women, but actually they're men. <laughs> and Gilligan upside down, because I'm, it, probably in this episode, the exercise music is coming through his mouth. What does it really mean? What it really means is this. At any one moment, and possibly in any one location, you will have radio signals occurring that are beamed into your body. Basically, I'm centering in on the skull. 
And as these radio waves come in, your brain can detect them and decode them and allow you to receive messages. Now what can these messages be? Well, they could be anything, such as like in the subliminal messages under the national anthem that were broadcast on television, those, were, those could actually be seen by the naked eye, but actually at such a fast rate that you don't really know you received them. Trust the government. Okay? The messages could be make war with your neighbor. The message could be go rioting. Oh my goodness, I think Ginger is, ginger is packing. <laughs> Anyhow, this is not about a trans stuff. Um, but back to the whole idea and the whole concept with these frequencies. What's the frequency, Kenneth? Okay. What's the frequency, Kenneth? That's not Kenneth, that's a commercial. <laughs> What's the frequency, Kenneth? The ad or the uh, story that was given by Dan Rather seems so wacky and so insane that the average person will say, Oh my, that's just so crazy. I don't believe a word of it. Well, that's when you need to pay attention, okay? Because that's how the hoax lie system works. All right? They will throw at you some of the craziest things, and you'll say, never in a million years. That is so wacky. But actually, it might be very true. So in this case, Dan Rather was the, the uh, victim, or basically the actor, that told of people who attacked him with an insane question. <laughs> What's the frequency, Kenneth? And very possibly, his name is not Dan Rather. That's just a stage name. Remember, all the names that are in the public realm, they're stage names. They're not, quote, the R-E-A-L real name of that individual. They have always functioned with stage names. So when they say, what's the frequency, Kenneth? They might have actually been referring to his actual name. Well, the title of this has been, What's the Frequency, Handsome? And that's the meaning of the name, Kenneth. I'd Dan rather not say. Thank you for watching.